information on this. For that, we want to bring in Dr. Hiral Tipperneni, emergency medicine physician. And Dr. Tipperneni, it's great to see you again. I guess just based on the data you. that you have seen and what is out there right now, do you think a third shot is warranted? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, this is, you know, again, uh, we have seen incredible data that has come from, for example, the study in Israel that has shown a clear drop in antibody uh, protection um, for folks after a certain period after receiving their two uh, jab vaccine. But let's, uh, I, I like that Anjali mentioned um, that, you know, the immune system has multiple components and antibody measurement is just one aspect of assessing the level of immunity. We have humoral, we have cellular immunity. There are other aspects of your immune system that are working. Um, but as she mentioned, those are slightly more difficult to measure. And uh, although antibody levels are certainly very very clear cut and easier to assess, uh, we have to look at sort of the whole uh, immune response to really know if immunity is truly waning or is it just that those antibody levels are down? Um, and that really, I think, is measured by the level of, of infection, the level of, you know, people who are getting those breakthrough infections. Um, you know, those are other pieces of the data that I think really have to tie into this picture before we decide across the board that yes we need boosters and then also to decide what is what are the demographics you know i think we know that the elderly are obviously the folks that are most at risk so it makes sense that if anybody received them first it would be the people over uh, age 65 obviously nursing home um uh patients uh health professionals uh immunocompromised individuals those are all those highest risk groups that we need to make sure we protect first and doctor, if we don't get a hundred percent endorsement, I guess how is this going to complicate then the messaging that's coming from the Biden administration? Are you worried about any pushback as a result of that? I am, and that's a great point because there's already so much vaccine hesitancy out there, and I think a big component of of what leads to that is that there there need there isn't always been clear messaging. Um, I, I think we have to be very clear and we have to be uh, thoughtful about when we present the data and make sure that there's a consensus so we're not doing this piecemeal. Um, you know, as as uh, I think you referenced earlier in one of the other conversations, you know, the Biden administration uh, brought out some information a few weeks ago talking about uh, rolling out a booster program. Um, it's sort of putting somewhat the cart before the horse. Um, we need to, uh, you know, address the fact that we still have a large percentage of our population that is remains unvaccinated. And I think the vaccine mandates uh, that uh, the Biden administration recently brought out, uh, I think it was last week, um, that's going to have a huge impact. We've already seen uh, rises in um, levels of vaccination related to companies mandating it or the federal government mandating it for federal employees and so forth. So uh, we have to make sure that the messaging is clear, it is proven by the data, and it is consistent because we already have so uh, so much disinformation out there and there's enough vaccine hesitancy that we don't want to muddy the waters. Dr. You're based in Arizona, the state, as we talked about last time you were on the show, is facing a shortage of ICU beds as we now are in the middle of September. What's the current situation in your state? Yeah, the numbers are still uh, incredibly high. Uh, we are having cases around 2,500, uh, I think, were, was the number today. Uh, that seems to be around the consistent uh, place that we're at. Um, hospitals are, are certainly inundated. Um, you know, the, the cries from the hospitals themselves, the hospital systems, physicians all across our communities uh, remain um, strong, asking people to please, 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 if you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated. We want schools to mandate masks because that is another point of discussion in our state. Our uh, governor has banned any mask mandates, um, which has led to an incredible rise of pediatric COVID cases. Um, the under um, the under 20 population, that demographic is now the second highest uh, number of, of COVID cases in our state. So that is of concern. Now, remember that you know, fighting against this pandemic, there's sort of a multifactorial way we can do this. It's a layered approach. There's vaccines, there's masks, there's appropriate ventilation, there's rapid and, and consistent testing. 
all of these measures have to be considered as we continue to fight this pandemic. We are not out of the woods, as we see clearly by the numbers every day. We are um, here in our state. We're almost at 20,000 Arizonans that have lost their lives. We are over 650,000 uh, Americans that have lost their lives. We still have a ways to go, and we have to be very consistent about the measures that we are putting in place to protect all of our communities. And speaking of those measures, we're heading into the fall and the winter months, especially where I'm I'm currently based in the Northeast. Certainly more people will be mm-hmm. gathering inside because the weather gets to be a little bit colder. What's the most important thing right. for people to keep in mind over the next several months? You know, it's if you saw the data from last winter, what we saw, especially here in Arizona, was a huge decrease in flu-related hospitalizations and illnesses. And it's 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 quite simple. At, at that time, it was you know prior to vaccines being commonplace, but people were masking, people were socially distancing, they were washing their hands, they were being very mindful of staying home and away from other folks if they were sick. Those are common public health measures that we can all continue to follow. Uh, with the the flu season coming, uh, people should certainly make sure that they are getting their flu vaccine, they're getting their flu shots on time, that they continue to use these common sense measures. Uh, If you are sick, stay at home. Uh, Wash your hands frequently. We know about easy transfer of viruses. You know, wearing masks is is something that we should consider possibly in every every flu season and every winter season when people are indoors, as you mentioned, in in tightly packed areas. And, uh, you know, we're we're not in the summer months, uh, necessarily in the warmer times where you have windows open and and easy ventilation. Um, So all of those measures, we saw that that had an impact on the flu uh, incidence rates. And we should continue to implement those measures because those are smart public health measures that work regardless of whether we're addressing COVID or we're addressing the the flu. Yeah, certainly. I hope many people are listening right now. Dr. Hiral Tipperneni, emergency medicine physician, always great to speak with you. Thanks so much again for taking the time to join.